G'day, Economic Liberty Channel coming at you again. Hope you're having a good day. It's been a pretty interesting day for me. Uh, not the least of which because I received a special item in the mail. A $50 trillion bill from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Now, that's not something that happens every day. But I figured I needed $50 trillion because I didn't have any. And, uh, oh my goodness, it was a uh, pretty good experience. And, um, it uh, made me feel quite emotional to see just how much money $50 trillion really is. So I guess that means I never have to work again and uh, I can just go on a permanent holiday because surely $50 trillion has got to be a lot of money. Well, in actual fact, unfortunately it's not worth Zippo. It's a nice pretty piece of paper with lots of zeros, but uh, it's an example of what happens when a central bank decides to start printing unlimited amounts of money. And the Weimar Republic did that in Germany some years back. And uh, they discovered that uh, when you do that, you eventually end up with the currency being worth a zippo. That was done in America with colonials in the 18th century, 19th uh, century. We've seen it done again in a few different nations. But this is the most recent example uh, of massive hyperinflation. We saw it happen in Argentina to an extent, but this is probably the best example of hyperinflation that's ever been seen since Germany prior to World War II. And funnily enough, the outcomes were very similar. Uh, for example, in Zimbabwe, after their currency hyperinflated, and this $50 trillion would be lucky to buy you a glass of water, the uh, gold value came into it and there was uh, significant portions of the population that were actually scrounging in gold areas and about a third of a gram a day they said wasn't what you needed to keep surviving in that environment. In Germany prior to World War II with their hyperinflation with the stories of the buckets of, of not buckets, the wheelbarrows of, I'm sure there were buckets of it too, wheelbarrows of money uh, required to buy a loaf of bread, for example. And there were stories of people that would come across a wheelbarrow of money and they'd tip out the money and take the wheelbarrow. So that's how worthless a currency can become when a nation decides to start printing trillions of dollars. And there's other examples I can think of. Uh, can we think of any other examples where that's happening right now? I certainly can. Um, America, uh, it's happening here in Australia, but not to the same extent because we haven't uh, been living quite so luxuriously on so much credit for so long and... We haven't been slammed by the banksters for quite as long. If you haven't yet, have a look at some of my other videos about the uh, banking cartels and the, how they've risen to power to essentially control the functioning of our global systems and uh, dictate essentially the majority of government policy. Now this money printing is happening all over the world at the moment, uh, but really it's its ultimate cause I believe is, is an inadequate uh, distribution of wealth. Now, people might say, oh, that sounds communist and Marxist, but it's not really. What's happened over the past 20 or 30 years is that a small group of people have obtained more and more of the wealth and power and property and, and uh, things that produce in the world and um, the companies that they run, not to say they're necessarily a coherent group, but they do represent a number of different groups and families and, and ideals and uh, systems from all over the world. But it's a, when you look at it numerically, they are a small group of people. And uh, what's happened over the recent uh, decades in particular, one of the main things that has caused this uh, current crisis we're seeing now is that 
the wealth has more and power essentially is more and more gone into their hands and as the power goes into their hands and increases they're more able to acquire acquire more of it by influencing the policies that allow them to then obtain even more wealth examples would be um, the tax cuts for big corporations that George Bush brought in that have netted hundreds of billions of dollars for these guys and uh, another example would be the um, money printing that's going on at the moment that essentially is uh, funding their uh, well, and protecting their interests in terms of their, their banks and their, uh, their various cartels that they run. So uh, there's, I guess, an opportunity that still remains for everything to be redistributed. For example, in uh, America, if all the money was redistributed there, every American would receive $90,000. In America right now, that would be enough for them to own their own homes and to go out and buy enough seeds to survive or to buy a business of some kind that could produce a, an income for them forever. And that would put these guys out of a job straight away. They, they suddenly can't run the show anymore. It would come back to the common man. So, unfortunately, it's, Australia has now become one of the worst places in the world. We've got some of the most expensive housing in the world and you're looking at 30, 40 years of your average wage now just to pay off your average house. If that's not slavery, I don't know what is uh, because you are essentially funding the majority of that money is going into the hands and, the, and that effort is going into the hands of these, these guys that are running these cartels and the the system that uh, that benefits from that and the few lucky ones that are at the top of the tree. So I think another another aspect of, of that being useful would be really nice if schools would actually teach something useful. Uh, not to say that none of it's useful, you know, we need to know how to read and write, oh, that's obvious, but beyond that I really don't see that uh, Probably 80 to 90 percent of everything that goes on beyond that is is of, of functional use. Uh, they they're basically the schooling system is not creating independent citizens that have real options in life. It's creating a populace that become good citizens and and lock into the system. They're not teaching skills where someone could go out, buy their own house, build their own house, rather where they could actually produce their own things to fend for themselves. They're not taught a lot of the skills that would enable them to be independent. They're taught a lot of the skills that would enable them to be dependent. And that is a major problem. But getting back to my initial comment, and the main thrust of this video is this hyperinflation scenario. Make no mistake, we're going to start seeing a lot more of this. And we might not see it as bad as Zimbabwe, but this is an example of what happens when the people in power decide they need to print money to maintain their power. There's some market laws that just do not allow it to happen. And um, I might sound crazy, and maybe I am, but um, this $50 trillion note is real. And so crazy or not, this stuff happens. And make no mistake, we're not immune. Now, I just wanted to give a bit of a visual example. This is the few percent of the richest people in the world. This represents how much they have. The other 90-something percent of us have about this much. So... They get that, and we get this. Now, you've heard the saying, money is power, and that is so true, because power is money, but money is power. And if you've got it, that's how much power you can buy. Now, why is it any surprise that all these things from the carbon tax and the energy costs spiking and the petrol costs and everything that's going on that locks us into this need to just run like rats on a wheel and we think it's all just the natural way of things and it seriously is not and there's not many people living that 
will tell you it, but I'm here because I've looked into the past and I've looked and at many smart, intelligent people that have understood this fact, and that is that we do not need to be rats on a wheel. Now, if we could reverse this so that 90-something percent of us had this much and these suckers had this much, what's going to happen? The power's going to come back here and everyone is going to have the ability to control their destinies. Now, don't get me wrong. There's spiritual aspects to life and material things are not the most important thing in the world. But you tell me how you can pursue a spiritual course when you are locked in like a rat on a wheel supporting this system with just about every bit of energy that you have. You tell me you can live a spiritual life in that. That's why despotism and fascism has always been stood up against by brave men with their lives because freedom of choice and the ability to create a life for yourself and for your loved ones and, and for your children is not something that you can just cast aside in the name of a spiritual pursuit and why should we worry about these material things? Let's leave that to the the economists and the politicians and the and the greedy people that, that care. No, it's not like that. That's not what it's about. This isn't about acquiring wealth. This is about acquiring freedom. That's what this is about. That's what this crusade and this need for change is about, which is why I'm making these videos. Is not because I you know, would like to own a mansion and, and be rich. I would like not to be poisoned. I would like not to be by my own food and my own water. I would like not to be locked into a system that requires us to run like rats on, the, on a wheel when, when it's not necessary. And I would like people to understand the history of, of where we're at and not just take things the way they are as, as if that's just the hand we're dealt so let's just accept it because we can make changes and we can make massive changes that will have a huge impact on this future and i can say one thing for certain if we don't stand up and start making more of a stand there are going to be increasingly at a very rapid rate our basic rights just starting to go out the window and those basic rights include things like the ability to raise a family on a standard wage. That's out the window now. The ability to have a freedom of choice and a, and a right to be able to do the things that you need to do in order to be free. Okay, now this video is not about all of that. It's just about one certain aspect of it. This hyperinflation coming to a city near you. Don't be fooled by these media announcements that inflation's low, this and that. They're not measuring the real stuff. In the Great Depression, housing went down by 90% to 10% of the average income. And the costs of food and basic costs of living started to get to a point where they were taking the entire income. Now tell me we're not already pretty well down that road. And with the energy stuff that's going on through the uh, privatisation and governmentalisation of, of these the, and the taxation of, of energy with global tax that's getting paid to the UN by dudes that have openly said they want to see a global government. This is serious business, guys. This note is proof that this stuff happens. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.